Thinking on our own has become a uh, luxury that's almost hard to come by. The luxury of having your own thoughts form without the influences of those around you. Whether it's from entertainment, friends around us, or family on a daily basis. Because when we unplug, I believe it's really, really surprising what kind of thoughts you start to come up with on your own. So it's like you realize you have a beautiful mind and all you had to do was just block out all the noise. And when you do that and you hear Quran being played or anything from Revelation, you finally find it so easy to pay attention. This luxury of thinking clearly, it's really something special. We are social creatures, but we are also very individualized and unique. And many of us may not be able to explore that individuality because of our inability to think for ourselves. And it becomes so much more beautiful when we look at this divine advice in Surah Saba, where the Prophet Muhammad was ordered to say, I only advise you one thing, that you stand for Allah, seeking truth in pairs and individually, and then give thought you will easily appreciate that there is not in your companion, as in the Holy Prophet, any madness. He is only a warner to you before a severe punishment. So standing sincerely before Allah, either alone or in pairs and reflecting deeply to seek the truth. Alone, because that should eliminate all prejudices and influences from all directions, or in pairs, because if it's just another person you can have a frank dialogue with, you will not be tempted to cover up your ideas or thoughts. There is no third party present with sudden reactions that can catch you off guard. Your mind would still be protected. Now, realize that these people don't have to be in physical form today. It could be people we're always talking to listening to or watching on our phones. Despite the fact that their noise may be coming from a device or a screen, they are still taking a share of our mind. In essence, this isn't alone time because alone time should be just you and your own thoughts. The advice here tells us to break away from these distractions even for a little while in order to allow our minds to really internalize the truths that do matter, the truths that may not be spoken about so much a truth that this verse emphasizes is the fact that there is a divine punishment coming and this messenger وسلم, is in fact very real. If we were to ever absorb this reality in our hearts, it will be hard for us to stay the same and things will slowly start to change. And from our thoughts to our attitudes to our actions. So Allah is telling you, you know, seriously, think about it. It's kind of serious. And yes, this verse is about seeking the truth, but perhaps we can also look at this from the perspective of appreciating our own inner voice for once, you know, our own originality and actual questions that we may have, which would still, no doubt, still steer us towards the truth anyway. In fact, I remember being very inquisitive about Islam and started really, really gravitating towards it the moment I decided to block out music for a short while. It forced me to actually hear myself because for me personally, music was actually my loudest noise. In a world of constant interferences, from the moment we wake up on our cell phone to the very last second where we put our minds to sleep, this advice weighs very heavy for me. And that's because when I started applying this advice, it was when the Quran started to find its place in my life. All of a sudden, there was enough mental space for me to absorb and pay attention to what Allah had to say about my life. A lot of people cry hearing the recitation from how beautiful it sounds, and that's, that's a great thing. But I would argue there is something even sweeter. Those tears that fall from a feeling or knowing deep down that a dialogue has taken place between the person reading the Quran and Allah Himself, ultimately having, you know, true divine inspiration. And when that happens to me, I feel like it's because at that moment I have enough mental capacity for receiving this revelation and I'm not completely consumed by what's around me. The Quran's verses are scattered all over on our radios, blog posts, car key chains in the mosque, the nearest to you in the dawn and the night prayers when it's being recited out loud. It's in postcards, it's on TV sometimes, it's on bumper stickers, Instagram posts, Facebook statuses, display pictures, books, movies, Snapchat stories, and callers to Allah who might remind you and convey to you his messages from above. So it's actually all around us. But what we lack is not the availability of the message, we lack the attention itself to the message. Most times we actually miss those letters because we are not paying attention. It's us. 
So it's wonderful to note that Allah in Surah Al-Furqan praises some individuals as the servants of the All-Merciful, Ibad al-Rahman. They are described as individuals who actually give these divine messages attention as much as anyone would for their phone notifications, for example. Because that is what they are in the end. They're Allah's personal notifications to you. So Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا And those who when reminded of the verses of their Lord do not fall upon them deaf and blind. Think about how excited we get when we see a notification from a social media post or how some of us get excited when a recruiter for a job emails you back. Can we even afford you know, to put that on hold for an hour or two? Most of us would not. So imagine the one who is in charge of all these affairs in their most intricate details. What if he himself calls upon you with his messages? This can be a relatively easy exercise, but I think it's important to give credit to that one variable that makes it hard for us to fully approach the Quran sometimes with our hearts wide open for reception. And that's entertainment. And I think for us, that's one of the most powerful tools used to numb ourselves today from ever feeling or seeing things on a deeper level. And of course, here I'm speaking in regards to excessive, useless entertainment, not regular, balanced, halal entertainment. If we look at some numbers, it can be a little shocking. Like when we look at porn, for example, one of the sites for it alone documented around 5,000 centuries worth of hours watched in 2016 alone by the whole world, okay? So that's a lot of time, man. Like really, just read that again. And think about it, that's like 500,000 years wasted completely. So I think one of the mental tricks we can all play on ourselves is the idea that we are only made to be entertained or pleasured or to have a good time. Um, no, we are not. We are part of an enormous human enterprise and we all have a very serious role to play. But we will never be able to know those roles if our hearts are too distracted to read a manual to figure out what that role is supposed to be. So even Allah in Surah Al-Dukhan uh, sheds some light on this. He says, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا لَاعِبِينَ مَا خَلَقْنَا هُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And we did not create the heavens and the earth and all that is in between them in play. We did not create them except with the truth, but most of them do not know. Contrary to popular belief, Allah calls us to lift the burdens from our backs, not to break it. He does this when He assures you and me that this creation was never made for just playing games. It was all for a purpose. Allah is letting us know that there is a purpose that lies ahead for each of us waiting to be found. It's liberating, really. And that's why it is important to have a mind that is both undistracted and intact, ready to listen and reflect on what really matters. And that's Allah's letters that are perfectly made for every single one of us, waiting to be opened. And of course, as always, I just want to remind you, this is not a tafsir, this is a reflection on the established meanings of the verses amongst our scholars. I'm not your neighborhood scholar or your teacher. I'm just some Muslim kid. <laughs>